it may be more harmful to your lungs in the short term than smoking. Good morning friends! In this video, I'm going to tell you what we know about the health effects of vaping as of 2022. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. First of all, to introduce the subject to you, you likely don't smoke or use a vape, but you likely have somebody you care about who does. And they likely think that vaping is not as harmful as it really is. In this video, you're going to learn enough to be able to help your friend or family member out who is vaping, at least letting them know what we know about vaping as of now and what we don't know about it yet. I studied the subject quite a bit myself a few years ago because I'm a former smoker that switched to vaping and then left vaping for a kind of oral tobacco that I chose to also not quit later. Now what we know about vaping is quite incomplete. In this video we're going to review some of the most interesting papers that have been published on the subject. We're gonna not miss the most important results but we're gonna avoid some of the details that really aren't that necessary necessary to get into in this discussion. And before we get started, I have to mention something. The reason why we're going to look at certain kinds of papers on vaping is because we don't have years and decades of evidence of how vaping affects our health empirically, in real life, in humans. We don't have that evidence, and because we don't, we really don't know what the long-term effects really will be. For example, if we were trying to study smoking with similar amounts of data, we probably wouldn't know how badly it damages human cells, predisposing them to all kinds of cancers for the rest of their lives. And so we can only study vaping in terms of its short-term limited effects that we want to analyze. And we'll begin here with a 2019 crossover study. In this controlled study, 36 participants were moved from smoking to quitting to vaping. So they checked these same people longitudinally across their different behaviors, trying to determine the amount of volatile organic compounds that these people had. Those are certain kinds of organic related compounds that we know are cytotoxic to our cells. That means they harm our cells in our bodies. The authors found that the vapors, which they called the e-cigarette users, had over 20% higher acrylamide levels and over 40% higher benzene levels than non-vapors, non-smokers. The vape users may have also had higher propylene oxide levels than non-smokers, non-vapers. But the vapers also had higher levels of methylating agents than even smokers. Now it's unclear how the levels of acrylamide were much higher in the vape users. It's unclear because usually acrylamide is made out of amino acids that are not contained in the vape juices. However, the benzene levels are more justified. For example, Juul pods have benzoic acid added to them. And the degradation of some of the solvents and ingredients used in vape juices can also cause benzene related metabolites downstream. And this may explain why the users of fixed vape devices like the Juul ones had higher levels of benzene in this study than the users of more adjustable vape devices where you can change the amount of wattage that you use. And on that note, the vape juices that had fruity flavors had higher benzene levels than the menthol flavors which had higher benzene levels than the dessert flavors. But they, this may be missing some elements of the different chemicals in the flavors that affect your health. This just regards benzene levels. So basically from this study we don't exactly know what kinds of volatile organic chemicals vapors have because it's only 36 vapors and therefore a limited supply of vape juice but we know that they have certain levels higher than normal people so they're not missing volatile organic compounds in regard to their habit. They have them just not as much as smokers and slightly differently. But this only investigates volatile organic compounds. What about other uh, molecules that may be damaging to our health. For example, what about heavy metals? Some studies show that vapors have similar amounts of heavy metals as smokers. Some studies show that they have slightly less amounts of heavy metals. It seems to be that the vapors that use prepackaged cartridges that have coils in them have more heavy metal levels than others. And it seems to be that the heavy metal exposure comes due to the use of the coil in vaping, partially at the very least. But even if vapors do have less heavy metal exposure to smokers, they still have more more than normal people. They also have way more rare earth element exposure than even smokers. So vapors have different kinds of molecules, even these rare earth elements that we don't really fully understand, than non-vapors, and different kinds and amounts of them than smokers. And for example, some of these things, like the heavy metals, may cause cancers later in these people's lives, but can't be evidenced that quickly in early exposure studies. Now, so far we've only discussed the different molecules that may be in vapors' bodies, as compared to smokers and people who don't do either of those two things. These molecules may damage our cells. When they damage our cells, there's usually an immune system reaction 
to this damage. And that immune system reaction can usually be judged according to certain biomarkers levels in blood tests. In particular, C-reactive protein is usually elevated when somebody has a lot of damage to their cells going on, where their immune system has to defend itself. So if we study C-reactive protein and what's called inflammation, the immune system's reaction, across vapors and smokers, maybe we can get a proxy of how much damage is happening to vapors' bodies as they vape. So for this, first let's look at a 2019 study that examined C-reactive protein levels directly after vaping. And this is without nicotine being in the juice. C-reactive protein levels rise within two hours after vaping and only return back to normal levels about six hours after vaping. This is for somebody who does it once. So the act of vaping we know, even without nicotine, causes acute inflammation. Is this visible in people across time or do they adapt to this inflammation level and adjust to it where it's not visible anymore so there have been several studies done on this subject some studies find that vapors have the highest inflammation levels as judged by C-reactive protein between all the groups, higher than smokers and higher than non-smokers and non-vapors. However, other studies found similar levels of inflammation between smokers and vapors and other studies find that smokers have consistently higher levels of inflammation. Some studies can't find statistically significantly higher levels of inflammation among vapors as compared to non-smokers. I think that these discrepancies are mainly due to study design. I personally think that vaping certainly increases inflammatory levels and causes damage to cells in the body due to the different molecules that are being ingested. But this can't be shown yet. By the way, for those that are curious about Swedish oral tobacco called snus, which for those that don't know, snus is different than American oral tobacco. American oral tobacco is a fermented tobacco that has a lot of volatile organic compounds. Snus has less of that. Snus is less cytotoxic and not strongly associated with even oral cancers. Unfortunately, there are no studies on snus users inflammatory levels certainly no good ones there are some in vitro studies though that show that snus generally is less cytotoxic to human cells than cigarette smoke extract for example but we don't know whether snus users have much higher systemic inflammation levels than non snus users by the way my personal opinion is that vapors are more likely to have systemic inflammation than snus users and before we leave the subject of inflammation I forgot to mention that across studies dual use of vapes and smoking is usually almost always worse than just smoking or just vaping. Next, let's talk about cardiovascular specific effects. Are, is there any evidence that vaping may be better for the cardiovascular system? Because for those that don't know, smoking also predisposes people toward cardiovascular diseases, in particular hypertension and other issues. So is vaping better for your cardiovascular system? Are you less likely to get damage to your heart and blood vessels from vaping? You may be, but it's not very well shown in studies. In particular, what studies show is that vapors seem to be as as likely to develop hypertension as smokers and moreover vapors seem to have enhanced clotting effects in their bodies more than smokers meaning they have a predisposition toward developing blood clots so for those of you that are predisposed genetically to venous thromboembolism which has been happening a lot since COVID for example or genetically predisposed toward hypertension you may want to specifically fear vapes in those specific contexts it may be the case that smoking is actually less unhealthy than vaping now that we're done with inflammation let's talk about unique effects to the lungs from vaping. In 2019, a unique ideology of lung disease was observed among vapors. This disease came to be called the e-cigarette or vaping use associated lung injury. Evali. Evali is distinguished from other lung diseases by its unique ideology. It involves some fat deposits in the lungs. It turns out though that Evali does not appear to be caused due to vaping in general, but rather due to vape juices containing vitamin E acetate. In particular, cannabis related vape juices contained a lot of vitamin E acetate, which seemed to cause this etiology entirely, although that's not completely known yet. So other than e Valley and vitamin E acetate containing vape juices, is there any particular danger to the lungs? Generally what's seen is that smokers who switch to vaping entirely don't do both. Their lung function seems to improve. However, there's also papers that theorize that vaping may specifically cause lung cancers in the future. Now I can tell you from personal experience as a former smoker who tried for some time to both vape and smoke at the same time, something unique seems to happen when you do both. You can feel it a heaviness kind of in your lungs that's worse than doing one or the other. But I myself stopped smoking and went completely 
completely to vaping and did notice lung improvement, improvement in the function of my lungs within a few months. In fact, I'm not even sure that my lungs improved further after I quit vaping. So I'm pretty sure personally that there's less damage to the lungs from vaping than smoking. And I believe personally you're less likely to get specifically lung cancer from vaping. And other than the chemicals, the inflammation, the risk to the cardiovascular system and the danger to the lungs, I want to mention a fifth issue, which is that manufacturers lie. Manufacturers of vape juices in particular lie a lot and their products are not third party tested. They're not governed by a governing body in the United States. This is particularly true for cannabis related extracts, but also true for the nicotine juices. As you can see from the fact that the Juul pods cause people to have more benzene related metabolites than other juices, even the bigger companies aren't necessarily more trustworthy. So essentially, you're not gonna know what you're getting in your vape juice over time. It's likely not going to be consistent and we likely don't even know what the effects of those individual molecules will be in yourself long term. So what are the takeaways from all of this? Well, combustion is uniquely harmful, but the vaping is also as a practice harmful and the chemicals contained in vape juices are also harmful. The harm from the vape juices in general and vaping seems to be less than smoking, unless for example, you're particularly predisposed toward cardiovascular disease, or if your vape juices contain vitamin E acetate, in which case it may be more harmful to your lungs in the short term than smoking. If you are going to vape, the effect on your health will depend on the juices you choose, the brands you use, and the individual flavors. And it may be the case that dessert flavors are a little bit less dangerous than fruit flavors. And it is certainly the case that dual use of both smoking and vaping is worse than either of the ones by themselves. So what would I make of all of this? Well, if I was a smoker, I would prefer to just vape. And if I was a vapor, I would prefer to just use something like snus, an oral tobacco that is not fermented. I think that snus is less harmful, would be less likely to cause cancers, for example, than vaping over a period of years. And also, I think that snus is much easier to quit than vaping is because it is not associated with this kind of physical habit. I can quit snus at any time right now, for example, without having much difficulty or effects on my life. I just enjoy the, the product, so I continue to use it. So for those of you that have friends that smoke, you should certainly encourage them to vape. But if you have friends that vape, you should likely encourage them to stop inhaling things into their lungs in general. Maybe you should recommend to them to check out oral snus or nicotine pouches. And in the future, there may be also similar things with THC related pouches. Fortunately, they don't have them yet. And eating THC has a little bit of different effects than smoking it. But nonetheless, smoking weed will also be worse than vaping some kind of weed products, unless of course you have that vitamin E acetate. I hope this was helpful for you friends. and I look forward to seeing you again this afternoon.